Today we're looking at Mazda's top selling car. I'm talking about the CX-5 Compact Crossover and I'll give you a run through of how it compares to its sibling crossover the CX-50. I'll also tell you why Mazda just killed its only EV in America just after two years. And stick around to hear Mazda's upcoming plans to stay competitive with the EV industry. You might be surprised to hear how it contradicts what other car makers are doing right now. I'll tell you one thing that Mazda's future won't include, and that's the MX-30. That's right, the MX-30 is officially dead after just two years on the road. And if you're wondering what the MX-30 even is, well, you're not alone, and that's why Mazda pulled the plug. Mazda only sold 181 of the MX-30s in 2021. Then it sold 324 in 2022. But as of June of this year, only 66 units had been sold. Let's say it wasn't Mazda's brightest hour. With embarrassing sales numbers like that, it's no wonder the MX-30 is being discontinued after the 2023 model year. Honestly, most people were surprised that the MX-30 even made two years in the market. It certainly won't be missed, that's for sure. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that the MX-30 is a super awful car. When the car was first released, believe it or not, it was actually Mazda's first ever mass-produced electrified car. So it was a milestone for Mazda. But the public perception of the MX-30 is that it's too cramped, inefficient, lacking in range, and too expensive. And that's not even a half of it. Put simply, it's just not competitive enough compared to the scores of other similar cars on the market. Specifically speaking, it comes with only a measly 32 kilowatt hour battery pack that provided 100 miles of range and a single front motor that barely pumped out 143 horsepower. When the MX-30 was released, reviews started piling up, but they were less than promising. A common complaint was that the MX-30 offered poor value compared to other entry-level EVs and was generally an unimpressive vehicle. On top of that, the MX-30 was only available in California. For Mazda to be able to sell cars in California, Mazda needs some of them to be electrified. Consider them as token vehicles. So the MX-30 exists even though it hasn't been selling well enough to justify why Mazda chose to even bring it into existence in the first place. By the way, this is actually the second time Mazda MX-30 EV was on the chopping block. The first time Mazda sold the MX-30, it was a modest goal to sell 560 units. But Mazda ended up selling only 505 units. So the car was taken off the market for a year. When January rolled around, Mazda released its MX-30 back into the world for another run. I'm talking a short reintroduction in California. But sad single-digit sales and another set of disappointing results made Mazda realize that selling the MX-30 just wasn't worth it. At least not to American consumers. Anyway, now that the MX-30 is being canceled for the second time around, this means that Mazda's back to selling zero EVs in the U.S. If you think the third time is a charm, well, I highly doubt Mazda will step on the same rake one more time. First time the MX-30 was discontinued, Mazda didn't issue a press release. But this time it did, and let's say it's the official death knell. Now, I know I just said that the MX-30 is officially dead, but let me clarify here that it's dead only here in the States. As far as overseas are concerned, Mazda will keep the MX-30 alive past the 2023 model year, particularly in Europe and Japan. Mazda plans to continue selling the MX-30 REV with its Wanko rotary engine range extender over in Europe. Initially, there was a lot of hype when Mazda fans heard Mazda was bringing back the rotary engine, only to hear later it was merely to serve as a range extender for their electric car with the tiny battery. The REV has half the battery size of the BEV version. That's because it's simpler, more compact design, and the extensive use of aluminum. In total, the 73 horsepower, 803cc single rotor gasoline engine weighs 33 pounds less than the old bi rotor Renaissance motor that left the scene with the Mazda RX 8 back in 2012. This engine can be found under the hood right next to the only electric motor. It's this electric motor that's also responsible for driving the wheels. The MX30 REV is compatible with both AC and rapid DC charging. According to the CEO of Mazda North America, the possibility of an MX-30 REV appearing here statewide is highly unlikely. So if you're getting your hopes up high, I'm sorry to break your bubble. The MX-30 REV also includes a 17.8 kilowatt battery pack that provides the vehicle with 53 miles of electric range. It also uses an 803cc single rotor gas engine that acts as a range extender, giving it a range of 373 miles when the 13.2 gallon gasoline tank is filled. To charge the MX-30 eSkyact of REV's tiny battery, all you have to do is hook it up to a DC charge and then you're looking at about 25 minutes of charging time. Interesting enough though, it's still longer than it takes an 800 volt Hyundai Ioniq to charge a battery that's four times the size. 
But now get this, barely a few weeks after Mazda confirmed the MX-30 IREV, the chief executive of Mazda USA said long-range EVs don't make sense for the most viable solution of the future. And that totally contradicts what other car makers are actually pushing to increase the range of their upcoming EVs. But here's the thing, most consumers will probably never need a vehicle with more than 300 miles of range. I and mean, even if they did, analysts don't believe it would be sustainable to exceed much beyond 300 miles. Jeffrey Guyton expects to see EV owners shift their priorities and needs eventually over time based on user experience. In his opinion, once a consumer realizes that charging an EV at home really isn't all that hard and they don't really need much range for daily driving, well then they won't seek out long range EVs. Instead, that's more important than EV range right now is the need to increase charging speeds and expand the public charging infrastructure. Here's the thing about EV batteries. They use finite resources. So it makes sense to use small battery packs. That's because one, they weigh less and two, they can charge significantly quicker. If an EV with a small battery can be charged quickly, then there's no critical need for a driver to lug around an EV with an unnecessarily large battery pack. Consider too that city commuters typically drive a few dozen miles per day anyway. Last year in 2022, Mazda's North America operation reported its full year sales of totaling 294,908 new Mazdas here in the States. That was an 11% decrease compared to the previous year. If you're wondering what was the top selling Mazda car last year, well that honor was the Mazda CX-5 compact crossover. Not only was the CX-5 Mazda's top selling car, but it also ranked as one of the top 20 vehicles sold in the US last year. Last year Mazda released the CX-50, a new compact crossover crossover that seats five passengers, but let me be clear, the CX-50 isn't a replacement for the CX-5. If anything, right now Mazda's selling about four times more CX-5s than CX-50s. So how do these two crossovers differ? Well, for starters, the CX-50 is more off-road ready, rugged, and adventurous, and you can see that theme play out with its higher ground clearance of 8.6 inches. On the other hand, the CX-5 rides on a different platform, and it's 7 tenths of an inch lower to the ground, so its ride and handling characteristics are different. In fact, it's more agile and elegant. The base trim for the CX-50 costs $1,000 more than its sibling. It's also slightly longer and wider. With the CX-50, you'll also find an improved infotainment system. With previous Mazdas, the touchscreen infotainment capabilities only worked when you were parked. But with the CX-50, there's wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And these features do allow you to use the touchscreen even as the car is running and not parked. One caveat with the screen though, it's positioned high and far away, so much that even tall drivers can have a trouble time reaching it. As well, the interior inside the CX-50 has an upscale, solid, higher quality feel. And I'm not just talking about the premium trims here, but that includes the lesser trims too. It's got the works, everything from comfy armrest material to the soft leather-like dash trim with contrasting stitching. Now cargo space is nothing to boast about in either the CX-50 or the CX-5, as it's fairly average for its class. The CX-50 offers slightly more cargo space when the rear seat is up. I'm talking about 31.4 cubic feet behind the rear row, compared to the CX-5's 30 cubic feet. But interestingly, the CX-5 offers more cargo space when the rear seat is down, specifically 58.1 cubic feet when the floorboard is up and 59.3 cubic feet with the floorboard down. With that in perspective, the CX-50 offers just 56.3 cubic feet. If you get the highest trim of the CX-50, which is the 2.5 turbo, you can tow up to 3,500 pounds, which is 1,500 more pounds than any of the CX-5 trims. On the other hand, the CX-5 offers slightly better fuel economy. 26 and 31 mile per gallon for city and highway compared to the CX-50's 24 and 30 for the base models. Both the CX-50 and the CX-5 come available with Mazda 2.5 liter Skyactiv G engine that outputs 187 horsepower and 185 pound feet of torque. Certain trims come with a turbocharged version of it. It can output 227 horsepower and 320 pound feet of torque. But now, when you opt for the turbo version of the CX-50, it also means you get larger 20 inch tires but that negatively impacts the overall ride quality and honestly doesn't have any noticeable advantage in off-road performance. Once the tires hit the pavement, they make the CX-50 feel jittery and you can really feel it, especially when you go over hard bumps. Funny enough, despite being fit with 20 inch street tires, the Premium Plus trim still doesn't offer any options for specific conditions like mud or rocky trails. Okay, sure it can do light off-roading, but if you're a serious off-roader, the CX-50 is not the vehicle for you. All in all, if you were to compare the CX-50 to its competitors, you'd find the Honda CRV blows it out of the water when it comes to passenger speed, comfort, and other things. If you're wondering what Mazda's future plans are, you can sum it up in one word, electric. 
Mazda currently is planning on plug-in hybrids for the upcoming years. Think cars like the CX-90 PHEV and the soon-to-be CX-70 PHEV and the CX-50 Standard Hybrid. Once these get to the door, rumors are Mazda will send out a few brand new battery electric vehicles around 2025. But now you tell me, do you agree with Mazda's decision to discontinue the MX-30? In your opinion, what's Mazda's best car it ever released? And do you think that Mazda should focus on or change its future vehicles? Please share by commenting below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.